Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, so this is the bonus video for class number 25, where I'm going to uh, work out a derivation for the expectation value of uh, momentum p sub x. Uh, this is kind of long and involved. It's a good uh, math exercise, and, and you, it is worth seeing this sort of thing uh, once in one's life, especially if you are thinking about uh, going to grad school, uh, but this argument is uh, not something I would ever expect you to be able to reproduce. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do today uh, is as follows. So our goal is to show what I asserted uh, in the main video uh, about the uh, momentum expectation value. Uh, and because this is going to be kind of long and involved, I'm going to outline what we're going to do in this video. So first, uh, we're going to have to derive a lemma, a result that's going to help us. Uh, and specifically, we need to work out something about the time derivative of the probability density. Then what we'll do is we'll apply Ehrenfest's theorem uh, and this lemma uh, in order to calculate uh, the expectation value of p sub x. Uh, the, the entire thing is going to be end up something, and we're going to end up with something we're going to have to integrate by parts uh, twice, in fact. Uh, so uh, consider this a, uh, use, a, a review of that uh, Calc 2 technique uh, if you're feeling a little rusty on it. All right, so let's dive on in. Oh, let's see. So uh, our goal is to calculate the time derivative of the uh, of the uh, probab of the probability density. So psi of x t. So the first step is to write this out. Right, and we can write this out as psi star times psi, whoops, let's do that, and we're DDTing this entire thing. Now we have here the derivative of a product, so we can go ahead and use the product rule. So I'll write this, uh, I'll take the, uh, as uh, it's the derivative of the first thing times the second thing, I'll, I'll write the derivatives last, so I'll, I'll write this as, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll write this as psi xt d psi star dt plus, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll suppress the xt's after this uh, line so that it doesn't get too cluttered, plus uh, psi star xt d psi uh, x, t, d, t. Okay, so now uh, what we're going uh, to, to do here is use the Schrodinger equation, because we do know how to calculate the, uh, the derivative of psi. So uh, the Schrodinger equation, I'll write this over here, Schrodinger equation gives, right? So I'll, uh, if I just reverse the usual order, we know uh, i h bar d psi dt equals minus h bar squared over 2m uh, d squared psi dx squared plus v x psi of x. Right, so that means we can go and solve this for d psi dt by uh, dividing by i and h bar. I'll divide out by h bar, but uh, I'll actually multiply by both sides by minus i, so minus i times i is 1. Uh, so we end up with, let's do this carefully, we end up with d psi dt. So I'm multiplying by minus i, and 
dividing by h bar. So I end up with minus i times minus 1, which is plus i. I have one factor of h bar, 2m, d squared psi dx squared. And now I have a minus i over h bar v x i of x. Okay, the next step, uh, so that sort of gives us something we can plug in here, right? Uh, but we also need to deal with this term. Uh, the easiest way to deal with that turns out to be just to take the complex conjugate of the Schrodinger equation so massaged. If we go and do that, we end up with the following. So, uh, so let's so let, I'll just write take complex conjugate CC, uh, and that gives us. I have to just complex conjugate everything. Uh, the only thing that's manifestly real here is the potential energy V. So I end up with d psi star dt equals minus i h bar over 2m d squared psi star dx squared. This flips sign, so I get a plus i over h bar v of x, which is real, psi star x t. Whoops. And, I, uh, and I'll stop writing the, the, the x t's there. Uh, so we can go ahead and take the Schrodinger equation and plug this uh, in here. Uh, and that, so use SE and C and complex conjugate. So we end up with D, DT of our probability density. So we end up with, we'll start with this guy. So we end up, and I'll just multiply everything through. So I have to multiply all of this by psi, so we end up with minus i h bar over 2m psi d squared psi star dx squared uh, and uh, plus i over h bar v, and I'll leave the argument off, uh, and then now we have psi times psi star, so that's this term here. Now we've got to deal with this term, uh, so, we so I'm going to multiply all of this by psi star, so that gives me, I get a plus i h bar over 2m, I get uh, psi star d squared psi dx squared, uh, and now I have minus i over h bar v psi star psi. Now, this maybe looks worse, but notice one thing. Notice that these two terms really are the same, uh, and they cancel out. We have plus i here and minus i here, psi star psi in both cases is just the probability density. So these terms cancel, which helps because this now simplifies, and I'll, I'll write the positive term first, and I'll factor out all the stuff. So we now have i h bar over 2m times the quantity psi star d squared psi dx squared uh, minus psi d squared psi star dx squared. Okay, so that already gets us somewhere. Uh, it's going to turn out that it's going to be, uh, so but there's one thing that you might notice about this. Notice how this involves second derivatives with respect to x. In general, second derivatives tend to be nastier to deal with, especially uh, if you have to integrate anything down the road than first derivatives. 
So we actually want to go and massage this some more so that we get an expression with just first derivatives. Now, anybody have a guess as to how we might do that? It's going to turn into applying the product rule. Uh, so let's, let's uh, so now let's massage. Uh, and so this, so I can take the first term. Right? I could almost kind of write this as the derivative of psi star times d psi dx uh, if I, uh, if uh, using the product rule, if I sort of cancel out a term. And, and let me show you what I mean. I can write this as d dx psi star d psi dx set that right so if I differentiate this in here I will in fact get this term here but I'm also going to get an extra term from differentiating this so I actually have to subtract that so I get minus d psi star dx d psi dx. So just take a minute just to be sure you follow that. Again, I the best way to think about that is that this term here is equal to product ruling this derivative and then subtracting off the term that has the derivative of the first thing times the second thing. So take a minute to let that sink in. We're going to do exactly the same thing for this term here. Now this time we'll have minus d dx, we'll have psi d psi star dx. Again we have to sort of compensate out this sort of the, second, the other term from doing the product rule. Uh, but this time, because if we were minusing the derivative, it's going to be a plus. And that gives us a plus uh, derivative of the first term times the second. We have a plus d psi dx d psi star dx. And that's the end of that. Aha! Look, these two terms cancel, so that helps. Uh, and notice now that we just have two terms involving first derivatives. And yes, the thing they're, they're differentiating like also has a derivative inside, but that's, I, I, I hope to suggest that this is going to be an improvement. Um, uh, and we already kind of have a first derivative with respect to x, which is kind of what we were starting to look like, what we're aiming for at the end. Um, so let's just wrap this up. And so that gives us, so I'll factor out the derivative here. So I have i h bar over 2n d dx, uh, and that's a psi star d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx, and that's d dt psi squared, and that is our lemma. Now this is in fact the probability current uh, thing that we kind of skipped in uh, over a couple of sections of Townsend ago. Uh, it is useful for this proof, but again it, it's sort of tangential to the rest of the course. Okay, so now that we have this lemma, we can go and apply Ehrenfest's theorem uh, and the lemma and be on our way to calculating uh, the expectation value of p sub x. Okay. So, so part two of this video, apply Aaron Fest and Lemma. So uh, what we had from uh, Aaron Fest's theorem 
uh, was the following, right? So we said that P sub x, uh, the expectation value of P sub x, uh, should be uh, m times, uh, should be like mv. So m, it should be, in fact, in, in other words, m times the derivative of the expectation value of x with respect to time. Okay, so that means, right, that what we have is we have m times ddt, uh, and uh, I'm going to suppress the limits of integration. You know they need to go from minus infinity to infinity, but I'm just going to suppress them for now to save some writing. Uh, ddt, uh, what do we have? We have x uh, times my probability density psi squared dx. Okay. okay, so what we need to do is we need to apply this derivative operate this ddt to this entire thing here. Now in this expression, x is a variable. We you know we're not talking about classical trajectory. So in that sense, x does not explicitly depend on time. The expectation value of x does, but not x itself. So if I go and apply ddt inside all of this, and I'm if I allow myself to pull it into the integral, the only thing that has a time dependence is the probability density uh, psi absolute, uh, modulus squared. So this then ends up being x times d psi modulus squared dt dx. Now this is now where we can go and use our lemma. Uh, and that gives us, so I'm going to pull the constants out front uh, so that they're not cluttering up my, oh, oh I even have that right here. I'm going to go and take this and plug it in. I'll pull out the, the i h bar over 2m in front. Uh, so we have an m times i h bar over 2m. We'll notice that the m's cancel. Uh, we get an integral of x uh, d dx psi star d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx, and the whole thing is integrated dx. Okay, so that's actually all of part two. The next thing is now to repeatedly integrate by parts. So that brings us to part three, integrate by parts. Uh, so let me just state what uh, integrate the sort of integration by parts theorem from calculus is before we go and apply it. So what integration by parts says is that if I have the integral of u dv, right, uh, I'm allowed, it's, I can basically sort of move the derivative around. I can, at the expense of a minus sign and a boundary term. Uh, so people will often write it depending on how you learned it. Uh, u, v, um, so evaluated at the endpoints. Um, so uh, minus, so points, minus the integral of uh, v, d, u. And again, we'd have to uh, transform the, the limits here uh, appropriately, um, but that turns out to be straightforward. So we're going to uh, apply the integration by parts theorem here, right? So it's useful when you have one thing that, like, you have, a, you're integrating a thing multiplying something that you know how to integrate. Well, that's exactly the situation we have here, uh, where we have a thing times the derivative of this, this thing. The integral of, like, this entire derivative is just the thing. So uh, that's what we'll we'll do. So let me just I'll draw an arrow to down here. 
So uh, I'll identify what u and v are. So we have, in doing the integral, we have u equals x. Uh, and so du, right, is just the derivative of this, which is uh, dx. And my v now is this entire thing, or so it's d dx, uh, psi star, d psi dx minus psi, d psi star dx. Right? So we in uh, uh, sorry, sorry, this is dv, my bad. Uh, this is dv uh, here. So we, you know, we in fact have the integral of u dv. Uh, and then I can integrate this uh, right away via the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, to give me psi uh, star d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx. Okay, so that means then that I can write my expression for p, the expectation value of p sub x in the following way. Uh, we have an i and an h bar over 2. Uh, so let's just put this, I'll put a giant bracket here. So we first have uh, uv evalu uh, evaluated at our endpoints. So that gives me x times this psi star d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx. Uh, and our endpoints, here I'll, I'll be careful, this integral is supposed to be evaluated from x equals minus infinity to infinity. Okay. Uh, minus the integral of v du, so it's going to be minus the integral of this, uh, so psi star d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx, uh, and then du is just dx. Uh, our limits uh, don't end up changing because we're still doing an integral dx, so that's still minus infinity to infinity. So now, here's the key step. So here we, uh, a key step. So we assume, assume psi is normalizable. If psi is normalizable, that means that some, by the time it, uh, you get to x equals plus or minus infinity, the wave function has to die, has to, to die off. And so this means that psi of x t equals zero at x equals plus or minus infinity. So like if you think about something, you know, think about a wave function that like looks like a bell curve or any of the examples of wave functions we've looked at so far, they all vanished um, at, at plus or minus infinity. Well, if psi of x t is zero at infinity, uh, same for the same applies to psi star xt vanishing. And then look at look over here, right? We have two terms to be evaluated at the endpoints. This term involves a psi star, this term involves a psi. Uh, we just argued that they go to zero at infinity, so it turns out this entire the implication is the entire boundary term vanishes. So this means that all we're left with is this integral here. So uh, at the expense of a minus sign, so we have, I'll factor that out, we have a minus i h bar over two now times my integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi, uh, see, psi star d psi dx minus psi d 
d psi star dx dx. Okay, we're almost at uh, what we wanted to prove, except that we have two terms and our original expression only had one. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of want to get rid of this. Uh, and the way we'll do it is we will integrate by parts again. Right? Because integration by parts, oops, that's again, right? Integration by parts lets us sort of move the derivative from one to the other. So let's be uh, specific about this. Uh, so what we have is then the so we'll have the integral of psi d psi star dx dx equals let's write out how we're doing the integration by parts again. Uh, we have a u and a, a v. This time u is uh, psi is psi du is d psi dx dx my dv is this uh, entire uh, thing Whoops. oh I realize I left off a I left off a dx over here my bad let me just fix that over there uh, so we have a dv equals um, we have our we have our uh, we have our dv equals d psi star. That's the wrong color pen. D psi star dx dx, and now our v is uh, psi star. Right. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. I'm leaving off that dx earlier. Uh, so now again, same thing. We have a boundary term. So we have u times v is uh, psi psi star evaluated at minus infinity at n infinity. Uh, now we have a minus v du, so we have minus integral from minus infinity to infinity of psi star d psi dx dx. Once again, Right? By normalizability, the boundary term vanishes. And so we are left with just this integral term. So we have minus uh, our integral of psi star d psi dx dx. Okay, so let's see where we ended up with, right? So here I can just replace this term with essentially that. Uh, so, so we end up with the expectation value of p sub x is minus i h bar over 2 minus infinity to infinity. Okay. We first have our psi star d psi dx. Now we had minus the integral of a second term here. Uh, we calculated what that was here. So we have minus times this minus here. So if we track the, so I have to actually introduce another minus sign. So that actually means that I, uh, I'll, I'll just write. Uh, I'll write both integrals out, uh, dx. So I actually have a minus, a minus, minus infinity to infinity psi star, d psi dx, dx. So I think you can see where this is going to end now, right? The two minuses give me a plus, but then these two integrals really are the same. So that gets rid of the factor of 2 downstairs here. 
And so that gives me, so I'll use thus, to, the function line thus p sub x, equal, uh, the expectation value equals i h bar uh, minus i h bar, integral from minus infinity to infinity of psi star d psi dx dx and and that brings us up oh, maybe I'll, and that brings us to the end of our argument thank you